Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Sophie and I am an illustrator and I'm currently trying to figure out how to paint again. So to begin this piece, I'm just going over a really rough sketch I did on my iPad. I'm using Procreate on a 10.5 inch iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. And I'm just creating a black outline so that I can later trace this onto a piece of paper. At this point, I'm not being too precious about any of the detail of this piece. I'm just trying to figure out the shapes and um, the flow of the piece. So once I have a sketch that I'm more or less happy with, I go ahead and use my iPad as a makeshift light box. I wouldn't say this is the best solution, but it worked for this occasion. Um, one thing I will note is that even with the paper on top of the iPad, the touch is still activated so you have to be quite careful where you put your hand because you might end up you know moving the image around as you can see I have to readjust a couple of times however it did the job and as you can see I've now got quite a clean sketch on my piece of paper I've already taped the outside of the paper with a bit of masking tape um, and then I went on to add paint I seem to have lost my footage of adding the skin tone um, but I moved on to the background quite quickly because the skin tone layer didn't seem to be applying very well. Um, it, it came through very patchy and I wasn't sure whether it was my paper, my technique or my brush. Um, so I just thought I'd leave it to dry and come back to it in a moment so that I could add another layer and hopefully achieve the opacity that that I was aiming for. So for the background colour and the hair colour, it turns out I had selected paints with a pearl finish. These colours turned out absolutely fine, but it did mean that I had to keep checking to make sure I'd got the full opacity of the paint on the paper because they reflected the sunlight so much. So you'll see throughout the video, I keep having to turn my paper which I do anyway to, you know, better reach round the, pa the painting. But I, I felt like the light reflecting back on them was quite deceiving. <laughs> so once I'd moved back onto the skin colour and added the second layer, the opacity was exactly how I wanted it. It does look very dark on camera, but because these have a matte finish, I think they tend to dry a lot lighter. Again, I'm not sure whether the skin colour didn't apply correctly because of something I was doing or whether it was it's just how these paints are. Then I picked up my green paint again and moved back onto the hair. To achieve the full opacity on this colour as well, I ended up having to go over it maybe two or three times. So as you can see, I am just using a smaller brush to define the shape of the hair and create a bit more movement within those strands again. Then whilst that was drying, I moved back onto the face. I added a darker skin tone just to add a bit of depth and to bring out the nose again. Then I added um, a lip colour, which I immediately regretted. But I wasn't worried about that because once it's dry, I'll just go back over it with another colour and try and fix it. And the background was still looking very patchy to my eyes, so I went ahead and added another layer of it. So the pearl finish of this background colour gave it a kind of uh, acrylic feel. So I was a little bit worried about it getting too thick and sticking to the masking tape. So I ended up peeling that off at this point because I knew that I didn't really need it anymore, I, w I probably wasn't going to go out the lines. So after taking off the masking tape and having a good look at this painting, I did wonder if it would ever come out of the ugly stage. But alas, the only way out is through. <laughs> so I persevered and started adding a bit of highlight to the hair. I really do just make it up as I go. Um, the entire time I was putting down this pale green colour, I just felt like I'd ruined the whole thing. <laughs> I think usually, because I primarily work digitally, I add the light colours towards the end. 
But when I'm working traditionally, I kind of flipped the process. So I tend to work, you know, with the lighter colours first and then finish off with the darker colours. So maybe my mind just can't picture it as I'm going. I think adding in this lighter green colour did help to establish uh, a bit of depth within the hair and give it maybe a bit more flow. I think naturally I draw with quite a graphic, bold style, for want of a better word. Um, and so using traditional mediums for me can be quite challenging because I, I find it harder to achieve the, the same crisp look that I'm used to creating digitally. So I think that's why throughout this entire painting I hated it and I didn't think it was going to turn out okay. But then as soon as I started adding a slightly darker colour to add a bit more dimension to the hair, it, I, I felt like I could visualise the, the end result a lot better. So as you can see I'm just using this darker green colour to not only outline the hair but to add in some shadows and draw some of the the direction of the hair back in. One thing I always do when I'm uh, drawing a character's the hair is to add in some flyaways and messy bits because nobody's hair is a perfect smooth block and I think if you add in you know wispy bits of hair and curly bits then it, uh, it really adds to the, the overall movement of the piece. So when I originally picked out this gold colour, I assumed it was going to be a flat matte gold yellow colour, but it was actually a full on metallic gold paint, which I ended up really liking and I think it had pretty good coverage. So I only used maybe two layers on these very small sections. However, I did feel like it kind of got a little bit lost, so I resolved to come back and give it some sort of outline once that had dried. Then I moved on to adding a little bit more dimension on the eyes and the lips. I was hoping I could save this lip colour by adding a slightly darker shade to the top lip, but I think it just ended up looking a little bit weird. So again, I resolved to come back and fix it once it had dried. I went ahead and used that same pink colour on the collar because I didn't want to introduce too many different colours into this piece. I felt like because the composition was so simple and the colours I'd chosen were so bright, adding too many colours into the palette would make the piece way too busy. And yes, the collar is inspired by the Sailor Scout uniform. So after adding a bit of an outline to the skin colour and tampering with the lips again, I felt like the piece was starting to come together a little bit. It wasn't until I added the black paint that I felt like the end was in sight though. I'm not sure what it is about lining the eyes that really pulls the piece together. So usually when I'm working digitally, this is the first thing I do that is just naturally where I will pick a piece up from. But when I'm using a traditional medium like paint or ink, I tend to do this last because I'll end up smudging it across the page. I also use the black paint to go in and add a bit of definition to those gold parts. Uh, I think it really helps those pop. And then finally, I start adding the white. So this is where I feel like a piece is pretty much finished and it helps me to kind of polish it. I don't tend to dilute this paint. I'm, as you can see, I'm just using it straight from the tube because I, I really like it to be a strong white colour. I also really like um, when your brush is a little bit too dry and you're just using straight paint, the texture it creates on the paper. So regardless of whether I'm working traditionally with gouache paint or digitally like I normally do on Procreate, I don't really hold back on this part of the process. So after going back in and amending the lip colour to tie it back in with the outline of the collar, 
I felt like this piece was finished and if I added anything else um, then I would probably be overdoing it. So overall I am really happy with the piece. I've really enjoyed trying out a new medium. I've only ever used acrylic gouache before which I think are quite different because they set in between layers. So that's it for my first video. Um, thank you so much if you stuck around to the end. Please feel free to leave any tips and tricks you have for using gouache paints in the comments. If you'd like to see more of my work then you can check out my Instagram and my Facebook which I will link in the description box. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!